as of this moment, I am actually out of roving, which means my spinning wheel is right there, chilling now, just waiting for some fresh new fiber to be fed. This year, my goal was potentially with my new spinning wheel to get a large amount of fiber, spin it up, and then knit a sweater from it. And this couldn't have fallen on a better timing or weekend for me to run out of fiber because it is actually Fiber West this weekend, which is a yarn convention here in Vancouver, well, outside of Vancouver. And this will be my first time at Fiber West, so I thought, you know what, let's just go together. It was raining, it's no longer raining, but we're still gonna grab our raincoats and our boots, just in case, and yeah, let's go get some sweater quantity of roving. I hope they have some. So we're just gonna attempt a little voiceover, but honestly, the commute there wasn't too bad because the sun just started shining and it got brighter and brighter as the day went on. And on my walk there from the bus stop to the fair, I saw this really funny mural, which I don't know why that lady is sitting on the hay bin with a basket of eggs, but I thought it was really funny. As soon as you walked into Fiber West, Crafty Jack's Boutique was the first stall you saw, and this is some of their roving. And this was another stall that had even more roving, but this was all natural fiber wool, like color, undyed wool, which is really awesome. And there was this one stand that had a bunch of buttons and vintage pieces for machines and spinning wheels, and am I the only one that thinks of Titanic when I see a mirror like that? <laughs> Now this yarn is stunning and I hope to one day be able to spin a beautiful yarn like that with intentional thicker parts as my yarn is unintentionally randomly thick. <laughs> and this is the haul that we made it out with. Not too bad. As always, would it be Canada without their geese? Just made myself a fresh cup of tea and let's hop right into it. Yesterday was actually the day I went to Fiber West and I ended up having quite a journey. <laughs> I ended up taking the SkyTrain and then took a bus and that was about an hour and a half, an hour and 40 minute commute. I don't really take the SkyTrain or public transit that much. So because I went alone, my friend who I normally go to these conventions with was out of town and um, I can't drive. And the funniest thing happened on the bus, as I was going, I was knitting on my camisa number nine by My Favorite Things Knitwear, and this older lady sat down next to me and asked me what I was working on. Turns out she, cro she crochets, and she was really impressed with knitting and said that it was super complex and she doesn't understand it. As we're sitting there, she takes out a blanket and it, she crocheted it and it is beautiful. Then she starts taking out shirts after shirt after shirt a tabletop that was a rectangle, a blanket. She was ready. <laughs> and turns out she had just been to a, like a show and tell with her friends, which I thought was super cute. I don't have an example of what she was showing me, but I do have this. So this is the type of crochet she was doing, and this is why I don't understand crochet. So this was actually a gift to me by my boyfriend's grandma, and she crocheted this. So the lady on the bus basically was making shirts and tabletops and blankets out of like crochet like this which I find insane I don't crochet I keep trying to learn and it's just it's all the counting for me I mean this one is so tiny but this is just impressive but basically the lady on the bus was just taking project after project out with crochet like this and I was just in awe so that was a really fun bus ride I had never been to Fiber West before I had gone to Knit City twice those are the only fiber conventions I've ever been to ever since learning to knit and this one was a lot more geared towards spinners which I was super happy for because I was going there for spinning fiber. It was a lot smaller. I think it might have been half the size of Knit City. And it is a two-day function, so it's still happening today. Today we're the Saturday, but I'm not going today. I ended up... The, yeah, so let's get right into it. So as soon as I got to Fiber West, I immediately knew which stall I was going for because I have been obsessed with Melly Knits for some while now and she is a fiber carter who makes these beautiful gorgeous bats of like all this combined material and well combined fiber. And at Knit City, 
and I wish at the time I had bought some, but I didn't have a spinning wheel yet, but she made these jumbo bats. And again, she made them for Fiber West. However, I showed up too late for them. Apparently they sold out in the first 10 minutes and I showed up at like noon. So I showed, it started at 9.30. So I showed up a little late. However, I knew immediately I wanted to get one of her bats. So this is the first bat I've ever got. I've never spun from a bat. I've only spun from braids and yeah, just braids. But I got this beautiful, gorgeous bat and I love it. I love it. So this is the color. I love how it's like natural, but like kind of creamy caramel yellow. Um, and then what I find super cute about her bat is she puts the original fleece on the front like this. I ended up going with the Glow Merino in Lamb. This is 100 grams for the bat and it is hand washed in carded wool. Merino Corydell plus Poly Pay Lamb. Pa I think I'm reading that right. I might be reading it wrong. It's hand, it's like a handwritten tag. 15 plus 15% 15 Tassar Silk. So I really got excited for this. She did have this one without the silk, but I really like silk in my yarn. So I was really excited when I saw this one and it is a very soft and squishy fiber. This looks like a cinnamon roll. <laughs> so I got my very first bat. Melly Knits also did come out, which I think I'm gonna join this year. We'll see if I remember by the time the holidays come around. But last year she did make an advent calendar, which was every day there was a mini fiber supply to spin up but this was the scarf that she made with it but you could knit technically anything with it and she had it there on the wall with next to her um bats should have taken a picture but basically along had all the tags of each of the different fibers that were in each section because each colored section is a different mixture and then you could really feel the difference once spun up and knit up what the combination of wools make together um, I was a little bit shy and very overwhelmed and I was kind of listening to everybody's conversation and hearing what they were picking and what she was recommending and um, I'm someone who's very very shy <laughs> so I really don't ask a lot of questions and I kind of tend to stay out of the way which is a little bit harmful to me but um, it is what it is. And then I went to another kiosk which is West Coast Colors. Now this is a dyer that was also at Knit City and this supplier has their own sheeps and they had their own like giant trash like kind of see those see-through trash bags but like filled with fiber and they were selling them by the pound and then they had some of their yarn that was dyed by others they had some of their roving that was their own dyes and basically it was just like a collection of different types of fibers so this was one of them that they had on sale but I think that this was an independent dyer who dyed these, this specific type of fiber. So this was Devonia by John Ar Arbon Textile. It is 100% Devon wool. Now I had never heard of Devon wool and I've looked into it when I was there and it's like a really soft wool and it doesn't feel too rustic, but I just loved the green. So I thought that it would be really exciting to try this wool and it is perfect for spinning for like a really thick wooly sweater. It is the color Ivy Leaf, and I ended up getting three different braids. So these run about 100 grams the braid, which is kind of insane because this is the same. They're both 100 grams, but this one's just all fluffed up. I just looked up and I actually found the John Arbon textile, but it says that it is 50% Exmoor Blueface, 30% Blueface Leicester, and 20% luster breeds. So these are different types of sheeps. And together they create this beautiful emerald green. It's called ivy green, but I love it. I love it. So I got three. So that ends up being 300 grams. So one reason why I only picked three was basically because they were selling these hanks that were about 150 grams. So more than these, but uh, knit spun up I'm having a hard time here <laughs> but spun up they basically ran 360 yards the hank so I figured if that is true and I got two that's like 900 and 
Like that's a lot of yarn. And if I was to spin it that weight and ply it two together. So I thought that this would be perfect for that. And then I could just figure out an extra yarn to knit with this. Maybe like a cream or a white would be really, really pretty. Even like, I don't know, I might do something different. I don't have an idea yet for the bat. I was way too excited and I just wanted to try one of her bats. And this yarn, I thought that it would be pretty either on its own or maybe with some other yarn. So I'm super excited to spin up the green. So after getting the green, I kind of realized I was buying little individual quantities of fiber and I realized that the reason why I went to Fiber West in the first place was to get enough roving to make a sweater. And I fell upon, so I stumbled upon Birkeland Bros Wool from Abbotsford, BC. They had bags of like five pounds of wool, which was way too much, but they had a lot of natural, plain, simple, woolly bread sheep. So they had Merino, they had Corydale, Polyworth, 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 uh, Gotland, and uh, they had a smaller silk, they had small cashmere bats. I was kind of torn between picking the Corydale and picking the Gotland wool. And I was wearing the sweater, and the sweater right here, it's actually a blend of the two fibers together. So it's Corydale and Gotland together. And I absolutely love the way the sweater feels. It feels really, really soft, but it's still like, you feel that it's wool, but it's like a warm, softer wool, not like a Shetland or like your Fair Isle, uh, like really rustic wools. I find those wools a little bit more itchier. And since I went with a kind of cream color from Melly Knits, I'm not someone who really wears big white sweaters. I tend to stain my stuff a lot. So I ended up going with the Gotland Tops 2733 Micron wool. So each bag is a pound. And I asked on Reddit how much roving one needs to make a sweater. And everybody said, get two pounds at least two pounds at least, then you can do whatever you want with it because I stated that I wanted to make a sport to DK weight, three plied yarn. Um, I put my size and I was like, I typically use about this much amount of yarn. And everybody was like, just most comments suggested to just get two pounds of wool. And that is what it said online, like when you Google as well. So everybody's suggestion was it's better to have more and then have extra skeins or yarn left over than to have under and then that's it. So I ended up getting two pounds. Now this one was the most affordable out of them all. This one ended up being $22 for the one pound. This one was 15 for the one braid. So three braids, $15 each. And then the Melly Knits was the most expense was the second most expensive at $60 for the 100 grams. I will just need to research how to get this ready to spin because I think it says it's a top and this is a top. Top is just the way that the fiber is prepped to be spun. So I'm pretty sure I can just spin directly from it if I can find the beginning and the end. It should just be like one long loop it kind of looks like it. I can kind of see the fibers like criss and cross. The thing is, this smells like a farm. You can tell that this is 100% wool. I kind of enjoy it. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of like a, it's basically like a braid, but not braided up. It's just kind of, is my camera having a hard time focusing because of the hairs? But this feels really, really nice. And I'm super excited to try and spin this. And what happened? Was there not another? I thought I split this into two. Oh, it's on the floor. Ah. Finally, I'm just gonna put that there. So then finally, the last roving that I bought was, I kept walking by this stall and the lady kept, every time I walked by, she, it ended up with her being like, oh, you again, oh, you're back. And I kept being like, I'm just indecisive. I just can't decide. She had this gorgeous mini tiny swatch and it really got me excited because how perfect and pretty. She was selling them three for, 
there was a deal going on. It was three bats, but I only ended up getting two because these were the two I really, really wanted. They are beautiful. They are blue. And it kind of does like a type of Noro-esque yarn where there's like little color pops. Let me see if I can find a picture there. But what really drew me, oh my God, this is, t what really drew me to this one was the blue and the red that really played together and make it fun. Um, so this is a triple blend and it is 40% BFL wool, 40% alpaca, and 10% sorry silk. That's what makes this super small, the alpaca and the silk. Oh, and 10% viscose. These are the smallest ones though. This is 68 grams and this is 71 grams. So these are both below 100 grams. So I really don't have too much of this. So these ones will most likely be like to add in a color work or just do something on its own. These two bats are from Calliope Fibers and she was really kind and gave me some little fiber cards so that when I do spin it up, I can write down the information like the name, the yardage, the wraps per inch, the weight, and the date I spun it on. I was going to say this one was the most expensive, but I think in the end, Melly Knits was maybe the most expensive roving I got from Fiber West. Um, these ones ended up being $15, the bag. After getting all of this roving, I ended up going to Penelope Fiber Arts stand. And Penelope Fiber Arts is actually the one who is hosting Fiber West and who organizes all the vendors and the whole event. And Penelope Fibers is actually where I got my, whoop, my spinning wheel. I just blocked it. But it's actually where I picked up my spinning wheel. Now Penelope Fiber Arts no longer has a store. They ended up closing, I think, a year or two ago. So now they are mainly a online retailer only. The communication with them was super efficient and I got my spinning wheel within the week after ordering it even though it was shipped from New Zealand because it shipped directly from Ashford and I remember at the time when I ordered it there seemed to be some back order with most other retailers around me and she was also having a sale a winter sale I think or it was on all the spinning uh products so it was perfect timing so I got it from her so they had a spinning wheel for demo and they had two different weaving looms as well. They had a bunch of uh, spinning weaving like machinery and just accessories for the hobbies. I ended up picking up a new bobbin. So the reason why I picked up another one is because I only have three. And if I want to ply together fiber, I'm going to need a fourth one so that I can spin three singles and ply onto one. I'm also planning to order some storage bobbins because bobbins are actually expensive. I poked around again on Reddit to see what people do, how many bobbins everybody has. A lot of people said that they have 11 bobbins. Now, for example, this bobbin alone was $21.50. Um, so if I was to get 11 bobbins for $21.50, but someone on Reddit suggested to look into um, storage bobbins. Now I had never heard of these and it turns out it is actually like a bobbin that you don't put on your wheel, but that you can use on the side in between like while you ply, while you spin individual singles. A storage bobbin is where you can actually put, like un spin the yarn onto it so that I could just become storage. Now coming home, I did realize, so, this, so these are the original Ashford jumbo bobbins that I have with my spinning wheel. And I thought I bought the same one because this was the biggest in the bin. There was like three different sizes in the bin and this was the biggest one. So from my recollection, just picking it up, I had remembered that it was the same, but turns out it's a little bit smaller. This part where it goes onto the flyer is the same size. It should still fit. Yeah, so I guess when I weigh these and spin up my fiber, I'm going to have to be very careful because, and remember that this one is smaller and lighter. By then I thought that I was kind of done buying and I was good enough on fiber and whatnot. However, after walking around while I was waiting for the raffle to be drawn, I stumbled and saw this beautiful gem, which is a... It's called the Needle Book, and it they were being sold by Bad Anna's or Bad Rabbits. It's yarn Shop or Bad Rabbits. Oh, I forget which one was there. I think they're owned by the same people, but... So this is what it looks like open. So it has a bunch of pockets with little label fillers that you can write different things. There's this one pouch with a zipper. 
on the other side. I've already put my needles. I have my double pointed needles here, the most used sizes. And the really big ones, I just, I'm barely ever gonna use them, but they're somewhere else. And then I put all my Chiagu metal needles here. More pockets, more labels. Another pocket with a zipper where I'm gonna put my cables. So on this side I have my Chiagu cables and on this side I have my regular plastic cables. And then my wooden bamboo knitting needles are all sorted on this side. So this thing is actually really huge, really practical, and I love it. I love it. I just went with this print because I thought it was beautiful and I just love the simplicity of the little, how it looked like it was like the plants were laid out and like the ink was painted, printed onto it. Um, that type of, that type of fabric. So this was my splurge. And my justification for this splurge is that now I can put all my needles, all three different needle sets, the Chiagu, the bamboo, and my double pointed needles in one book bag. I can store all my stitch markers in here, all my measuring tapes, stop walking around my house, room to room, searching for where my needles are. And basically this was kind of like my little gift to myself for reaching 3000 subscribers, but also bought with my YouTube money, which is always, which is something I never thought I would say, which is very exciting. And finally, the last acquisition, I accidentally put it in here, but I bought it at the same time as I bought my first bat from Millie Knits. And it is actually these beautiful little stitch holders, these little stitch markers to mark where you are on your project. And I thought that they were super, super cute. And I bought two different sets because I wanted to give one to my friend who is a knitter. She couldn't make it to the event, so I thought that it would be really nice to give her something. So I kind of had to get these, and I saw someone wearing something similar, like literally attached to their knit item as they were wearing it, and I thought that that was really cool. I had never actually thought about that. Why not wear your cute little, it's like a little brooch or a little accessory, you know, so like little pizzazz, you can put it on your little sleeve, a little like pearl or something. Anyways, I thought that that was really cute. So I just need to decide which one I'm gonna keep for myself and which one I'm gonna give away. I would say that this kind of wraps up my Fiber West experience and I had a lot of fun. It was a much smaller convention than the Knit City one, but it did have a lot more spinning stuff, which was great. This is why I went there for. And I think this might be the only convention I do this year because I do plan a lot of traveling. So, and Knit City is not happening in Vancouver. I think it's in Calgary in the spring, in the summer. Fall. I'm naming all the seasons, but I'm pretty sure Knit City got moved for the fall. I'm supposed to be in Turkey by then, so we'll see. Hopefully this time it actually happens. I remember I said I would go last year, and if you guys don't know it, I'm a 3D animator, and because of all the actor strikes, my job ended up getting affected, but like later on in the, after the summer when the strike got done, so anyways, big deal. I didn't, end up, I didn't end up going to Turkey and we pushed it to this year. So I'm really excited for that. But that being said, I don't think I'm gonna go to another convention. So hopefully this is enough roving to spin up for my year. I have two pounds, so I have no idea how long this is gonna take. And if you guys wanna follow my spinning journey from spin to roving to a finished knit, I highly recommend you guys subscribe like this video and I'll see you guys all in the next one. Bye.